Now we'll talk about converting repeating decimals to rational numbers. Basically that means converting repeating decimals to a fraction. I'll start off with an example. I want to convert, here's my example. You're told convert 0 0.3 repeating to a fraction. And I'll demonstrate the technique with this example and then I'll, I'll go through some other examples and, and make some important points. Okay, but here's what I do to convert 0 0.3 to a fraction. I'm going to start off, I'll use a variable x and I'm going to say x is equal to 0 0.3 repeating. And my goal is to write x another way instead of writing it as a repeating decimal to write it as a fraction. And here's what I do. I'm going to say 10x well if x is equal to this then 10x has to equal this multiplied by 10. And when I multiply by 10, that just means I move the decimal point to the right one space. So 10x is going to be 3.3 repeating. Moving the decimal point to the right just gives me this. I still have an endless number of 3's over there repeating on and on. Now here's the step that makes this work. 10x is equal to this and x is equal to that so 10x minus x is going to be this minus that. And I'm going to write exactly that. I'm going to say 10x minus x equals this minus that. So this equals 3.3 repeating minus 0.3 repeating. And you can probably see that if I take 3.3 repeating and I subtract the 0.3 0.3 repeating, that, that part is just going to go away. So I can cancel out those two things. And I have on the left 10x minus x, which is 9x, and on the right I have 3. So if 9x equals 3, then I can see, I can just divide both sides by 9. I'll actually write that here, divide by 9. And those 9's cancel out, and you see I have, I'm left with x equals 3 ninths or x equals one-third, and that's my answer. Notice I started with 0.3 repeating, that's x, and now I've shown that x is equal to one-third. So 0.3 repeating is in fact equal to one-third. Now if that technique seems a little bit tricky to you, just hang in there, you'll see some more examples. Let's look at this one. Convert 0.71 repeating to a fraction. I always start off by taking a variable and letting it equal the number that I'm given, 0.71 repeating, x equals 0.71 repeating. Now in this case I have two digits that repeat right there. So instead of saying 10x, I'm going to say 100x. 100x is going to be 71.71 repeating. Remember multiplying by 100 just moves the decimal to the right two spaces. And those seven ones repeat forever, so after I move the decimal over, I still have all these point seven one seven one seven one repeating over and over again. And now I'm going to think about 100x minus x is going to have to be this minus that. So let's write that. Let's write 100x minus x equals 71.71 repeating minus 0.71 repeating. And you can hopefully see that the 0.71 repeating is going to get subtracted away. And I'm left with 100x minus x on the left, which is 99x and 71 on the right. And then I can simply divide both sides by 99 and the 99's cancel out on the left, and I'm left with my answer. X is equal to 71 over 99. We can actually check this pretty easily on the calculator. If I do 71 divided by, point, divided by 99, I should get 0 0.71 repeating. And there it is, 0 0.717171, and it rounded at the end but that's the repeating decimal, 0 0.7171, displayed as best the calculator can. Here's another example. 
convert 0.628 repeating to a fraction and it's the 2 and the 8 that repeat. So here's how I'll do this. I'll say x equals 0 0.628 and the 2 and the 8 repeat. Now again I have two digits repeating so I need to multiply by a hundred. A hundred x is equal to this number with the decimal point moved two places to the right. And that's going to give me this, 6.82828 and so on. And I'm going to just write that as the 82 repeating. So if, if it helps you to see these extra digits, remember the, the 28 repeating right up here is 2828, 28, and so on. And this is a 62.82828282, and so on. And you can see that I can get two decimal places. Moving, moving that decimal two places to the right gives me exactly, exactly that. Now my next step is to subtract 100x minus x is going to equal this minus that. Now sometimes it helps to write them one above the other like we learned to write subtraction when we first learned it. I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write 62.82 repeating minus point six two eight and the two eight repeating and that's tricky that's tricky to subtract but watch what happens if I write it out write out some of these decimals let's write it like this sixty two point eight two eight two eight two and I'll subtract point six two eight two eight two and in both cases these repeat and now look I have the, they're, they're lined up neatly. You need to write this with the columns lined up neatly. And you can see there that this 28282 and this 28282 and so on, those are all going to cancel out when we actually do the subtraction. And so we just have 62.8 minus 0.6 and that equals 62.2. So on the left side over here, when I do this subtraction, I get 99x equals 62.2. And then I can divide both sides by 99. And the 99s cancel out. And I'm left with x is equal to 62.2 over 99. And to get rid of that decimal point right there, I'll multiply the top and the bottom by 10, and I get 622 over 990. And I can reduce that. That, in fact, reduces to 311 over 495. And we can check this on the calculator again. We want to do 311 divided by 495. And when I do that, there it is, 0.62828282828 and so on. It rounded the last digit there and that's fine, but we do see the pattern and we're correct. 311 over 495 is our answer.